Okay, at this time we're going to go to 10.0, which is citizens participation. I do have three cards, so I am going to read the instructions, if you'll bear with me for just a minute. Um, the Lexington County School District 1 Board of Trustees provides a time for citizens participation at each regular board meeting. There are a few, few guidelines. First, in order to speak, you must be a parent or a legal guardian of a student in Lexington County School District 1 or a resident and taxpayer of the district. Second, each speaker will have three minutes. Third, you may comment on an agenda item, school operations, programs, policies, or other matters of concern. However, you may not speak about specific individuals, whether students or staff. There are other ways to bring those situations to the board's attention. We want to give everyone who came here tonight a chance to speak. For that, for that reason, board members will not reply to your individual remarks. This is a time for you to speak and for us to listen to you. And if someone makes the point or points you came to make before you, if you could just state that you agree with the previous speakers and not restate every single point. We also ask you not to clap or make comments while other individuals are speaking or after a speaker finishes as this slows the process considerably. If you wanted to speak tonight, we ask that you fill out a card that gives us your name and address for our records. These cards were on the signing table as you came into the meeting. Is there anyone who would like to address us that did not fill out a card? Okay, right here we've got um, Ms. Hill. Can you provide that gentleman with a card, please? Okay, we have two. Let's see. Okay, and they'll pick those cards and bring them up to me. So if y'all will be filling that out, and we'll go ahead and get started while y'all are filling those out. As stated earlier, you should not expect us to reply to your remarks. This is our time to listen. And although we may ask you a question, as a board, we will not take any action or respond tonight in response to the issues you raised during citizens' participation. So at this time, I'm going to start with the, the I think everyone is, is everyone talking about rezoning except for one person? Are y'all going to talk about rezoning? Because I'm going to put all the rezoning people together, and I'm going to let this gentleman uh, speak first since he's uh, brought another issue to our board. This is Jermaine Johnson, Dr. Jermaine Johnson, and he's with the Midlands Father Coalition. And he is uh, asked, he contacted the board earlier via email and asked to come and speak at Citizens Participation. So we want to welcome you, Dr. Johnson. Good evening, board, uh, superintendent, everybody, uh, citizens. Um, yes, I did play basketball before y'all start asking those questions. I did. I, <laughs> <laughs> I went to the College of Charleston. But I, I'm, I am a, Dr. Yes. Guyton is a College you of the Charleston, Charleston Cougar. All right, Cougar, C-O-U-G-A-R, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyways, uh, I am a site manager with the uh, Midlands Fatherhood Coalition. I did not realize how close you all were to you, literally 0.8 miles of the road. We're across the street from Fats. So uh, this is our first time coming in here today. And I really want to just uh, make you guys aware of what we've been doing. Since I've taken over at, as the uh, site manager here uh, for the Fatherhood Coalition, I wanted to make this emphasis of uh, 2019 to be about relationships. So we, uh, we are pretty much the best secret here in Lexington County. So what we've been doing, we've been helping fathers to re-engage in the, in the lives of their children. So we help fathers in terms of child support or if they want to, uh, you know, be able to see their children more, um, if they want to get into the schools and understand about how, you know, just showing up for parent-teacher conferences and anything like that. Um, we help fathers to, to increase their visitation. Um, we also help them with anything such as peer support. So we have uh, new daddies as well. We have a new daddy boot camp. So uh, we have guys that help other guys, you know, with changing diapers and getting them to figure out these wow. things. A lot of us men, sometimes we have situations where uh, we, we don't feel comfortable talking to other individuals, but we have a peer support group there where guys can come in there and really just pour their hearts out. Um, so you, you can really, you, you can feel the support. And all of our services are free. We're a nonprofit organization. Um, but we also have a new grant. And this new grant, it focuses on young parents. And this is where you all come in. So we really want to just assist the, the young individuals with um, um, being better parents because they, sometimes they, they've made some wrong decisions, but that doesn't mean that their life has to be over. Um, so we have this new grant that, uh, that we just implemented. We've been doing it in uh, Richardson County for the past two years, and we've helped a lot of young parents between the age of like 16 to 25. Um, so this individual here is uh, Daryl Boyles, and he is an intervention specialist with us, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about the uh, young parent piece. And I'm going to do my best to get it in one minute and three seconds. <laughs> so uh, like you said, like uh, Dr. Johnson said, we got a federal grant from the government, and we help young students help them navigate the brand new responsibilities of, of childhood. Uh, me and my wife, I have, we had our first child 
eight month old, so a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of up every two hours, he's whining again. Uh, so we help them navigate uh, the, the, the challenges that they're about to come. We help them with parenthood, uh, economic stability is one of our components. Um, helping them how to deal with co-parenting and also how to navigate that. So I think I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't mind, tell us your name again so I can add it to the card. Daryl. Daryl Boyles also have uh, oh, some, great. some okay, couple great. brochures. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we, we also do a, a job readiness boot camp. So some of these individuals who are leaving school with, without these job skills and the, the life skills, we all know a lot of, a lot of us have, <laughs> we're, we're missing life skills and soft skills now. So we teach them about resume building and dressing for success. Um, we have uh, partnerships with different companies that come in. They will interview them right there on the spot and offer them job opportunities. Um, we have a lot of different services that we, that we do. We're actually in the middle of a job boot camp right now this week. Um, it's a five-day job simulation where we teach them about everything about obtaining and keeping employment. Um, so they come in there and they have to come with a shirt and tie and everything is dressed, you know, uh, tucked in and everything ready to go. We teach these young in individuals how to even tie a tie. Mm -hmm. So a lot, you, you'll be surprised how many individuals are coming there that don't even know how to tie a tie. And once we give them that opportunity, they get to go home and they show their kids how to tie these ties. And you see smiles on faces and you see all the different types of things. You know, so we do a Daddy and Me 5K as well in Lexington County with the uh, Springdale uh, Police Department. Um, we do a Daddy and Me uh, da Father-Daughter Dance as well that just happened last week. Um, and, and again, all of our services are 100% free. So um, anybody that needs to get any assistance from us, please send them our way. Oh, thank you, Dr. Johnson and Mr. Boyles. Um, what I'd like to do is I'm going to give this card to uh, Dr. Little, and he is going to be in touch with y'all because I definitely see room for y'all in our Lexington <laughs> One agenda. So <laughs> I, I speak at a lot of schools, so yeah, I mean, right. anytime you, you, you need us to come around. Okay. Madam Chair, as a point of clarity, I did not play basketball for the College of Charleston. <laughs> uh, I believe it was uh, uh, Coach Kresh did not realize my untapped potential. Um, <laughs> Or it could have been I was horrific at basketball. I'm not Listen, sure which. Thank you so much. Oh, even better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boyles. That was great information. Okay, now we're going to move on to rezoning. And I'm going to call up uh, Mr. John Fellows. And Mr. Fellows lives at 149 Hickory Meadow Road, and he has a daughter in one of our schools. And Mr. Fellows, take it away. Good evening. Um, I wasn't sure what you're going to what I was gonna say, but um, I just wanna acknowledge that you all have a really tough job. Um, and so I appreciate Kind of tap the bottom of it and see if it'll kind of push okay, it up the go. battery. Keep it really close, yeah. all right. Um, I just appreciate that you took all that time to read all of our comments from the public. Um, and I also wanna acknowledge that um, you have to kind of, in a way, deal with all the decisions that other governmental bodies um, deal with, um, whether it's the county, or the local municipalities because uh, they, they, they issue all those permits and those all end up being households and then you have to do with them all. So um, that's not a, uh, an insignificant amount of uh, duties that you all have to do. So just wanted to appreciate, uh, let you know that we appreciate that. So okay. thanks. Thank you, Mr. Fellows. We appreciate that. Okay, at this time, I'd like to call up Miss Julie Hartley Wham to talk about uh, rezoning and she lives at 224 Kenwood Drive and she has children at Midway, Meadow Glen Middle, and I think they're all in the immersion program. So, Ms. Wham, go ahead. Hi, um, in a similar fashion to this gentleman, I have, um, I understand that you've heard our comments by what you echoed to us. Um, so I wanna thank you for that. You said affirmative comments are certainly welcome and I'll take this opportunity since I'd already put my name in the hat to speak um, to let you know how much I personally appreciate it, but also uh, a lot of the parents, I know that there's uh, probably a lot of sighs of relief um, and officially uh, whenever it's voted on, um, those will be, be complete. But um, I, I really do appreciate the opportunity for feedback and that you really did hear and you really did listen and that you were considering those programs like the immersion program because that is uh, near and dear to my heart and I'm glad to hear that it is to you guys as well. And the other thing that I thought was so amazing at all of these meetings that I participated in and maybe a little sad that I hadn't participated in the past until something uh, kind of urgent to me came up, but that we were all basically here saying, hey, we like what we have. We want to keep keep this going. And you know, in most cases, I don't think people are satisfied with where they are and say, what a good job you guys have done 
to create a pathway that people are satisfied in. And um, to conclude, though, I would like to offer one more piece of I know you've heard, but the feeder pattern, I think, um, is an amazing um, plan forward, and I really do like the way that that sounds and feels, and hopefully um, we'll, that will even be embraced with the immersion programs and such, and I'll let you go. Thank you, Ms. Lynn. Okay. We'd now like to call on Mike Flannery. He's going to be discussing uh, rezoning as well. He lives at 305 Crimson Lane, and he has children at Meadow Glen Middle and River Bluff. Uh, Mr. Flannery? Thank you. Um, I actually prepared a little something, um, not knowing what, what was going to transpire today. So first off, thank you. Thank you for even giving me the moment. Um, I am one of 92 homeowners from the Hawthorne community. Um, we sent in a petition. Um, a neighbor and I went door knocking, knocked every single door, 92 doors. Got 88% participation. Some couldn't. Um, for fear of career advancement, and some couldn't because they weren't home, and some couldn't because they were selling their homes. Um, but everybody that I talked to, everybody that we talked to, agreed 100% that although you don't buy the school when you buy the home, um, it was sold. The school was sold to me. Um, I came down here. I know you can't tell from my, my draw that I'm, a, <laughs> I'm not local <laughs> by birth. Um, I'm Southern by choice. Um, I came down here on purpose um, for a better future for my kids. Um, I chose Lexington on purpose for a better future, for a better education for my kids. Um, and everybody here understands the amount of work that it takes and the appreciation we have is tremendous. But before your board members, as you come in, your parents, your aunts and uncles, your grandparents, like myself, I'm a grandfather. Um, and we all fully understand that value of school and how kids attend school based on location. Um, and it's hard to just draw a line on a map, like you said. Um, so I appreciate the changes that you guys made and that you heard us. Um, the curriculum and the logistics of adding another bus um, is pretty incredible that we we're going to add a second bus to Mineral Springs Road when it was already as congested as it is, um, that we we're going to have parents drive from Meadow Glen and River Bluff all the way down to Lexington and make parents take the two worst congested areas in the entire Lexington at 7 o'clock in the morning. Me being one of them. I'm selfish. I'm sorry, but that's, that's a lot of driving. Um, so what I did was I blew up the, the proposal, the first proposal, and I have three kids. I have a uh, senior, River Bluff Gator, senior, sophomore, and a sixth grader who would have been tremendously affected by this, this plan. And I said to my sixth grader, um, my son, I said, what's the easiest way? And he said, well, Dad, he said, the easiest way to fix this problem is the quickest way to get from point A to point B, we all know it, is just to draw a straight line. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he did. And by doing that, we encompassed everybody in that community to go to the right school with the right people at the right time mm -hmm. for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your consideration. <laughs> importantly, I'm going to also, I don't know if you guys got that petition, yeah, but I'd like did. to hand that to you as well. Yeah, but we we should, would we'd love to take it. Please give it to Dr. Little. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Flannery. Okay, now we're going to talk about Beachwood rezoning, and I have Miss Mindy Cox. She lives at 201 Crimson Lane, and she has children at Meadow Glen Middle School. Miss Cox? Good evening. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. I really do appreciate, I live in Hawthorne as well, and so I really do appreciate that you heard um, our request. I can tell by the comments that the board made that you are listening to what we said. I do agree with, you know, left to right and also the immersion programs. I think those are good points. I wanted to agree um, with the uh, comments that other people have made. We really just, I completely, I'm, I was almost in tears in the first conversation because I was upset and now I'm in tears that I hope that it stays the same way. And so, but I think that this is a tough job and I really just want to say you guys are doing a good job and I appreciate you looking at the big picture and everything as a whole um, for what's good of the community. Yeah, well, thank you, thank Ms. You. Cox. Okay, anyone else that wishes to address the board? Okay, 
Well, thank you so much, and we appreciate y'all. And like I said, we'll be voting at the March meeting at our regularly scheduled board meeting.